All right, welcome back to more Black Bass. <clears throat> when last we left off, we were, I guess, in the same spot where we are now, and this is the piles. These are piles from an old bridge. The bass like to stay here. Watch out for the piles when you cast. I have no idea why they even put this into the game. There's never any big bass here. And even if there were, you couldn't catch them. Because, in my experience, I'm not going to demonstrate it. You can give it a try if you want to. But in my experience, no matter where you cast, you're always going to hit one. I mean, look at this one. What kind of bridge was this? Who constructed this thing? <laughs> Uh, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but if you, uh, no matter what direction you cast, you're always going to hit one of these, uh, one of these, uh, piers. So, it's not even worth it to even try. I mean, you'll, ne you'll never, ki you'll, they'll never, there's no point in fishing here, period, whatsoever. Uh, at the, at the piles at this lake or at any other lake that we have either. Uh, it's just pretty much pointless. There's never any big bass there, and like I say, even if there were, you couldn't catch them anyway. Uh, also, we do have the topwater weeds again at this lake, but I don't think that the big bass hang around here either. Give it a try. Take a look around. Anything. Alright, so we got light cover leading into light cover. Alright, so this is light light. I don't think you can catch a big bass at the weeds here. I just don't think they're in here. Right, there's a bluegill. Bluegill. That's all I see. Yeah, I wouldn't. Let's try one more place, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend a lot of time hanging around here. <clears throat> there's not a lot of options on this lake, period. But there's better ones than this. All right, there's hit. This is heavy cover. Moving into heavy cover. So this is heavy, heavy. There's a little bass. We don't want him. I don't see anything there. Yeah, I see a little fish. That looks like a bluegill. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything here. My advice skip over the piles for sure. And. I would go ahead and just skip over the weeds also. The buoys, you're not going to find any big bass there. Uh, let's see. We might, we need to kind of experiment with these gravel bottomed areas. So let's check this one out. I haven't found a big bass at an at open water uh, area. Well, I take that back. Uh, the deep water weeds, I did find a big bass there and I caught him uh, in the last video. But these gravel bottomed areas, I haven't found anything here so far. Nothing worth catching. And there's a bass, but we don't want him. He's too small. But we need to keep our eyes open. Just in case. Because again. Not a lot of options here. So there's more weeds. The marina, you can try the marina, but there won't be any big bass there either. Next place I usually go is right down here to the reeds. Now, there are big bass in the reeds, and it's a shame. Open water here. 
Catch him if we can. Let's go with the jig pork. Still the natural. Don't need a brat one. Or any sunny enough. Too big, but we'll take him. We can hang on to him for now. Maybe, maybe we'll cull him eventually. Get us a bear one, or a couple more bear ones. Um, let's see. One thing I forgot to mention: uh, this is the first lake that you can catch uh, spotted bass. Now, there's no now anything big that you catch here. Anything about the same size as what. What we've been catching is going to be largemouth. The spotted bass in this lake are uh, relatively small. Like, for instance, that could be a spotted bass right there, or either one of these two could be. Um, so, there's really no po you know, there's no point in going after the smaller fish, so you probably won't be catching a, a, a spotted bass, not in this lake. But I would like to show one off. And if I find one, then I will just do that. Uh, I will. I'll just I'll um, find one off screen and then I'll film it and I'll group it in with the video. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's go back to the trees. The trees are a good place to fish here. Nothing here. Exactly a hot day, but I really don't think that matters. <laughs> this game is not without its flaws, just like any other game. All right, we're gonna head to the other side. This is kind of the rotation that I like here. Got 
some deep water activity. Let's see what we got here. There's a big blue gill. There's a catfish. Eh. Let's go ahead and do this right now. Let's catch him. Show what a big blue gill looks like. you can catch is five pounds and <laughs> if you catch a five pound bluegill in real life you better run to the to the state records office and let them know that you caught it because I venture to say there's not a five pound bluegill in North America period in any way anybody who's a fisherman knows that a bluegill is just a perch a small or a small perch four pound bluegill yeah <laughs> it's huge, it could be a lake record wow. yeah, Okay. Yeah, it could probably be a world record. There's not too many of those. Spotted bass, they're the smallest of the uh, three the three types of bass that fall into the breed of, uh, that, or that fall into the classification of black bass. Now, in Texas, they have actually added what they're calling a fourth uh, breed, or, or, well, a fourth type of bass that would fall underneath the black bass. It's called the Guadalupe bass. But, if I'm not mistaken, the Guadalupe bass is actually a hybrid of, <clears throat> I think, a largemouth and a spotted. I'm not sure. Uh, I may be wrong on that one. It's something that's just came about in the last, oh, I think 15, 20 years or so. Would be nice if we could catch both of these guys, but I just doubt we can. Just hope like we're catching the bigger of the two. <laughs> a lot of smallmouth. <clears throat> the lake that I used to fish at in New Mexico, Conscious Lake, that lake actually has more smallmouth than largemouth in it. So whenever we used to go up there and go fishing and we troll for walleye, we actually caught more smallmouth than we did largemouth. Matter of fact, I don't think I ever caught a largemouth out of that bay, out of that lake. My dad did back years ago when he was younger and he used to bass fish up there. But 
it's kind of it's funny that the smallmouth that in this game in my opinion don't really look anything like an actual smallmouth in real life um, in real life to me, a small mouth just looks like a large mouth with a smaller mouth, and kind of a more, kind of a greener, a more green texture to them. And of course, they're smaller. They're not. Hey, we're gonna be able to catch both of them. Cool. And they're, they're just not a. They don't grow to be quite as big. You know, a large. I mean, I think the state record in Texas for a large mouth bass is over 18 pounds, and I'd, I'd venture to say there's never been a small mouth. Uh, Excuse, well, I may have, okay, let me say that again, in case I misspoke. I think the state record in Texas for a large mouth uh, caught out of Lake Fork was uh, over 18 pounds. And I, I venture to say there's never been a small mouth caught in the United States period that was even close to that one. famous bass fishing lake. If you've, ever, if you've never fished there before, I definitely recommend eventually make a trip there. It, it is awesome. Now the restrictions on what you can keep as far as a bass at Lake Fork are pretty extensive because it's a it's very controlled. Uh, you know, it's famous for largemouth bass for a reason and the restrictions there are in place to keep it that way. As a matter of fact, I, I don't think you can keep anything as far as a, a, a large mouth bass. I don't think you can keep one less than 18 inches. Maybe 14, I'm not sure. I think it's 18. I think. Um, out of all, out of the top 25 uh, record largemouth bass that have been caught in the state of Texas, I think out of the top 25, probably 20 of them were actually caught right there at Lake Fork. Let's try this place. You know, they, they created that lake and they stocked it with big bass and they, they really turned it into something special. And then, not too long after that, they tried to follow suit with another lake in Texas called uh, O.H. Ivy. And O.H. Ivy is uh, further south. It's actually um, oh, probably about 50, 60 miles uh, east of uh, San Angelo. I'm very familiar with that one. That gun, what did I do? And I'm very familiar with that lake too, because we used to fish that lake. My, uh, when I was a kid, my grandparents lived in San Angelo, and San Angelo is actually where I went to school, where I went to college. Where were the crayfish? Yeah, I'm, we fished there some, which, you know, we, my dad and I, we spent a lot of time bass fishing there. And we caught some bass, but it's definitely, I mean, <laughs> it's definitely not on par with what they've done at Lake Fork, that's for sure. And over the years, the water levels in the lakes in Texas have dropped considerably. Just a shame. Alright, let's see what we got. 
Maybe we got a big one. Alright. 11.4 pounds. Good deal. That, this is the kind we want to catch right here. That's Those are the ones that will push us right up there to the top. Alright, so we know now that we can catch a big bass at the gravel bottom. Uh, at the open water areas with the gravel bottoms. Let's check out a couple more places here at the reeds. Then, let's head back to the rocks for one last hoorah there, and then I think I'm going to cut the video. And if I have any, I happen to run across, uh, or if I, if I can't, I'm going to, I'm going to follow this rotation, just basically a counterclockwise uh, rotation around the lake. Start at the, start at the rocks, head for the trees, then... Uh, head down for the reeds on the right on the uh, west side of the lake and then back around to the trees again and then down here to where I am uh, on the reeds on the east side of the lake. If you run into a gravel bottomed open water area or uh, deep water weed area, check those areas out too and then head, we'll head straight back up to the rocks again. Just follow that rotation. And eventually you will have uh, five big enough bass to weigh in and you'll win this tournament. Let's check the reeds out one more time. There, ooh, there we go. Let's try to catch him. for John to go away because he's just slowing us down. Plus, when John is gone, he will give us four free lures. That would be very nice. A couple of lures that he gives us are actually pretty dang useful, especially in the next lake that we'll be going to after this one. Next lake will be the Bronze Lake. The Bronze Lake is a really good for smallmouth, but it does have some largemouth. If you can catch some big largemouth there, then you, you want to do it. On average, the bigger largemouth is about a pound bigger than the small. I'm not sure gonna be able to catch that one. Well, this guy, he wants a lure. I don't know if his big brother up there wants it. Let's try one more time. Nice. He's way up there and he's suspended. There we go. Now let's see what we get. There we go. Get him out here in the open. that I go to, and I, I know I've already mentioned this before, but uh, just like we did at the Green Valley Lake, here at the Onyx River, and in the next two lakes, I'm going to do the best I can <coughs> to bring in fish big enough to break the uh, lake record, the uh, or the, the combined weight record.
I need to go back and look and see what the lake record is for the Onyx River. Just to make sure. In case I decide to weigh in a little bit early, I want to make sure that I can still break the record. I might need to fish a little more. What do you got for me? Oh, we got another big one. 10.4 pounds. Ooh. That'll work. We'll take it. So we're at 50 pounds already. We could weigh in right now and win this thing. Alright. Alright. We'll go ahead and head back to the rocks. So, follow the pattern that I talked about earlier, and I think you'll be good. Um, if uh, there's anything I want to show off between now and the time I weigh in, I'll, I'll record it and I'll cut it into the video. Uh, when we pick it up next time, um, we'll either be weighing in or I'll be showing something off. And appreciate you guys watching. I hope y'all are having fun so far, and uh, like I say, just... Just stick with it. This, I mean, <laughs> fishing in real life is, is a game of patience, and it's no different in this game. Just uh, stick with it, and uh, you'll be good to go. So appreciate y'all watching, and stay tuned for another episode of Black Bass. Later.